pollination. Observe the diagrammatic representation of pollination carefully. The transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or of another flower is called pollination. Self and cross pollination. Pollination is of two kinds self pollination and cross pollination. Self pollination. Self pollination is defined as the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to stigma of the same flower or of another flower on the same plant. Cross pollination. Cross pollination is defined as the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower on one plant to the stigma of a flower on another plant of the same species. Types of cross-pollination Different mechanisms or modes of cross-pollination are listed here. Entomophily Pollination which is brought about by insects is known as entomophily or insect pollination. Anamophily When pollination is through wind, it is known as anamophily or wind pollination. Hydrophily Phenomenon by which the flowers are pollinated by water is called as hydrophily or water pollination. Ornithophily The phenomenon where flowers are pollinated by birds is called ornithophily or bird pollination. Chiropterophily Pollination carried by bats is known as chiropterophily or bat pollination. Comparison of insect and wind pollinated flowers. A comparison of insect and wind pollinated flowers has been made here. Insect pollinated flowers are large and showy. Even if they are small, they occur in clusters, which make them conspicuous. Wind pollinated flowers are small, inconspicuous, and they are usually not colored and are often green. Anthers of insect pollinated flowers are small and remain within the flower firmly attached to their filament, whereas the anthers of wind pollinated flowers are large, protrude out of the flowers and are loosely attached to the filament so that they are easily moved by wind. Pollen grains of insect pollinated flowers are sticky or spiny and are produced in smaller quantities as compared to wind pollinated flowers while the pollen grains of wind pollinated flowers are smooth and light so that they can be easily carried by the wind the pollen grains of the wind pollinated flowers are produced in very large quantities to compensate loss in transit stigmas of insect pollinated flowers are sticky flat or club shaped whereas stigmas of wind pollinated flowers are large, feathery and hang out of the flower. Insect pollinated flowers are generally scented and produce nectar, china rose, petunia, salvia, pea, sunflower have insect pollinated flowers. Wind pollinated flowers are not scented and do not produce nectar. Plants like maize, rice, wheat, palms, pine, etc. have wind-pollinated flowers. Pollen grain The pollen grain has tube nucleus and generative nucleus. The tube nucleus stimulates growth of pollen tube and it eventually disintegrates. In generative nucleus, the oospore is formed by fusion of sperm nucleus and egg cell. After a certain period, the oospore develops into an embryo. The second sperm nucleus fuses with the secondary definitive nucleus, resulting in the triploid nucleus called endosperm nucleus.
mature ovule. Parts of a mature ovule are Integuments Integuments have two layers of protective coating. Micropyle Micropyle has a minute pore or opening through which the pollen tube enters. Nucellus Nucellus is the nutritive tissue lining the interior of the ovule. Embryo sac Embryo sac is in the center of the nucellus. It contains the egg cell, antipodal cells and polar nuclei, definitive. Synergids are the cells flanking the egg cell. Fertilization Fertilization involves the fusion of male and female gametes. The steps involved in fertilization are Germination of pollen grains Growth of pollen grain into tube formation Entry of the pollen tube into ovule and embryo sac Discharge of male gametes into embryo sac Double fertilization Changes taking place after fertilization Observe carefully as to what changes take place in the flower after fertilization. Sepals Sepals usually wither away, but in some cases, as in tomato, brinjal, etc., these remain attached to the fruit, are persistent. Petals, stamens, style and stigma wither away. Ovary Ovary forms into fruit. Ovules. Ovules form the seeds. Egg cell fuses with the male gamete to become zygote. Endosperm nucleus becomes the endosperm. Integuments become the seed coat. The entire ovary forms the fruit. The ovary wall forms the pericarp, skin of the fruit. Claystogamy. This condition helps in self-pollination as these claystogamous flowers never open. These flowers are small, colorless, odorless and do not produce nectar.